All right, so hopefully this video explains it better than I can in text. This is, of course, not the same type of ski. This is a VX uh, Cruiser. Totally different uh, motor configuration as a 1.8 liter. So what I'm saying is to, uh, to remove this seat bracket on your FXHO, that's, that'll give you some uh, working space here. You're still gonna have the mid wall here. You're still gonna have your electronics box, uh, possibly uh, in the way it might be a little bit too tight to see. I can't remember just uh, from memory how much space there is there. Um, this, this particular box is different. It has a big lip down here. So it gets in the way of being able to see that, that rear coupler that you'll be able to hopefully see right there. So on yours, what I'm suggesting is your oil rev reservoir sits right here, and I, and I have a full motor. Hang on a second, let me turn this brightness down. You have a, uh, I have a full motor that I'll be able to show you this here right behind me. Uh, I'm just kind of trying to sh show you where it's all at. Anyway, you, you'll get it. So what I'm thinking is if you take, if you can get your hand down in here, you know, tilt the nose of the ski forward overnight, all your residual oil that is already in there in theory uh, should should migrate forward enough to get out of the way. See if you can get down there and kind of clean out the bottom first, dispose of that one, and then take a clean rag and or a net, uh, paper towels and try to stuff it right under on the back side of that oil reservoir and then push it forward so that it is sitting. Right, so here's your motor. This is actually an FX140, but it's identical as far as, uh, you know, just visually, you wouldn't be able to see much difference. So, so what I'm trying to get you to do is come down here, right behind this coupler, where it exchanges into the back of the ski, and I'll show you what's going on here. Whee. You're trying to clean up oh, <laughs> the, uh, The area that's sitting right underneath this oil tank and the oil tank is only about you know five six inches deep and there are two um uh da, 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 what do you call them two uh, dowel pins i guess if you will and i'm going to pull an oil reservoir up there so i can show you more easily what it looks like on the other side of this thing where these things connect into this this oil pump right here. So um, what I'm wondering is if it could be leaking from one of the O-rings. I think it's here and here maybe where those two, those two dowel pins are. So my suspicion, if anything, is that you'll get oil that's leaking right here. And, um, you know, it'd be, it'd be a lot easier to take a look in there actually right now with an inspection camera. You'd be able to feed that inspection camera down and just kind of check this area out right in here to see if there's any uh, oil dripping, uh, just kind of standing on these little these little lips. That would really tell you pretty quickly if you have an oil leak coming from one of these uh, sections here. Um, the other possible leak places for fresh oil anyway would be this oil pump itself. You know, there's a, a mating surface right here of course, you know, so the a drip of oil might be seen with an inspection camera down here on this bottom end here. There's a seam here. It could be dripping from, you know, anywhere down in there. Um, another possible location, of course, let's see, would be through this, this seal here, which is an O-ring seal, where these uh, the cases come together with this whole assembly. And, uh, you know, only... Only good way to see that is by taking the entire airbox cover off of the top to get access and then feed an inspection camera down under there to take a look. Um, let's see, another possible location for an oil leak, unlikely, but would be, which one is it here? Uh, I can't see where that bolt is at. There is a, sorry, hang on. Sorry about the camera work. Where the heck is a bolt that on here? I thought there was a bolt on every one of these for a full oil change. I'm not seeing the bolt 
that I am looking for, though. Huh. Hey, let me pause this video. Okay, so this is just for my own shop notes. I believe the bolt that I'm looking for is actually this one here, which on yours is not uh, should not have a tube coming off of it on this this FX 140 which I just bought this ski broken and and pulled the motor out of it actually has a a tube coming out of it that this one yeah that feeds up to the bottom side of this black box and then travels back up into the top of the oil reservoir. That's that's the first time I've seen that, but I haven't haven't played with an FX140 motor before. So anyway, so yeah, so that shows you kind of a, a, a geographical orientation, if you will, of of where all this stuff is at here. So getting back to what I was uh, texting you about, this bracket right here is what holds your. Let me stand up. What holds your um. Uh, oil reservoir tank uh it's just it's just a support bracket i mean there's a, a bunch of bolts back here that if you have to remove this you're going to remove let me go back to that since it's possible i don't want to have to make another video uh, ow, 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 ow. smack myself damn it <laughs> all right so to remove this this entire oil reservoir Hopefully, I changed out these these bolts here. There's one here on that bracket, and there is one down low here on that bracket. So instead of having the castle nuts, or I, I could call these castle nuts. I'm not sure what these are called. Instead of having these types of nuts on there, this is just a, a nut, and then there's a, um, it's basically it's all thread. It's just like a manifold uh, bolt that's permanent to that bracket. And it sticks out here for you to lock that on there and lock those together to support it. The problem is having those on there, that's all trapped, kind of trapped in there. And it makes it impossible to move this bracket out or the, the reservoir out this way. Um, I think that's true. Hang on. Oh, man, now that I'm looking at this orientation, it doesn't look that bad, actually. So... If you have these on there, these would get removed. That one and the one that I showed you on the other side. And then these large, these are 14 mil. Nope, 12 mils. So you have this one here gets removed. This one. This one. This one. You notice they all have like... On this motor, they have a smooth head. They don't have any uh, any writing on them like these have, like a number on them. These do not. And let me look under and make sure I can get an accurate count on these for you. So, let's see. Yes, yeah, so you got one, two, three, four. Should be, that'll, that'll pull that oil reservoir off of there. And then this one here, the shiny, and this one here. Then your oil reservoir should, yeah, it should pull off. I don't know why, I, I don't know why I determined that I needed that bracket to be able to come off differently. But anyway, yours might have a, a full bolt, so just remove that full bolt out of there. And that full bolt out of here, and then it's going to need to pull this way about this about this far in order to get that uh that to release all right so anything else in there i think that's it let me show you the back of that or the front of that oil reservoir all right so here is the forward facing side of the oil reservoir tank and these are those two dowels that i was talking to you about let me pull one of those all right there we go so what i was suggesting is possible is you have these two o-rings on here focus there you go um so you know could one of those be leaking and then this is where all the oil is going to pass uh through into your your oil pump from is just this little seal that these o-rings make so if one of those is leaking cracked or otherwise 
it could be leaking from right here or right here. So to get orientated here, um, or oriented, um, you got those on the front here. That would be the, yeah, right where this lump line here, whatever drops down the focus. There we go. Right where this protrusion is, is one. And right where this protrusion is, right there's the other one. Okay. And again, let me do this one last count on those those through bolts. Make sure I'm not going to leave you hanging with needing to find another one, two, three, four, five of them. Yeah. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Oh, jeez. Okay, so you got one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so there's another difference. I guess I just figured out or found out on the on the FX140 versus the FXHO. And yeah, this is a 04 FXHO tank. This is an 06 FXHO tank. So those bolts that hold it on are one. This is the front side, this is the forward facing side. So you got one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah, so there you go. So very likely, uh, again, this is forward facing. Look for uh, one on the, let's see, as you're looking at from the back of the ski, it'll be on the upper left-hand side of your ski as you rotate this 180 degrees around. There'll be this guy, this guy, and then bang, bang, and then lower corner. Since I have this thing laying out here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is uh, from a VX110, but it's the same bracket, virtually the same bracket. So it has these, these uh, manifold style bolts. Focus. Good Lord, focus. There you go. Um, and I like to remove those and then, uh, and then I come from the other direction. So this guy actually faces like this. And it is bolted here and here vertically down to the uh, to the block here and here. I have this backwards there and there, and then it comes through, and then you've got your your nut that goes on the end here to lock it down. So I remove this, and I just simply take a bolt through this way to lock it down instead. Um, I I'll just do a little trial on there. I thought that would make it easier, but it doesn't look like it makes any difference at all. Anyway, while I'm in here with a couple motors on the floor, I might as well just show you this just in case this becomes something you have to look into. So you have your, your oil pump here on uh, back back bottom left side of your motor. And once you remove this section here, I'm going to show you what you're looking at. So you end up with your your oil screen so uh, that always gets pulled out and make sure that that's uh, nice and clean you know when you're when you're rebuilding a motor because these can get pretty clogged up when when a motor comes apart and uh, you get metal shaved and stuff well yours is a brand new motor so your uh, your oil pump was gone through so there is a o-ring that goes no i think you know i take it back this is a metal gasket that goes around this whole area here so it is possible that you're getting a, a drip leak right through underneath here um, that, again, you'd only see by either pulling the motor or by uh, using an inspection camera underneath there to see if, this, if there happens to be a drip here. And what I would do, if you get to that point where you can uh, keep this reservoir on, and if you can gain some access underneath there, I would, I would just go one night and I would... I would clean out the whole underside. I just, you know, feel around on there, wipe everything I could get my hands at from both sides. And then the next morning, uh, I would go outside with an inspection camera and I'd be aiming it underneath and kind of looking to see if I can find a bead of fresh oil underneath there. Um, let's see. Anything else I need to show you here? Uh, to rem I guess to remove this oil pump... Let's see, make sure I guide you in the right direction. One, two, three, four. So again, these bolts are the ones that hold this on. So you got 
on this particular ski, it's just the one, two, three, four. And it's the same as this one here. One, two, three, four, it looks like. There we go. Yeah, it should be right. Yours is going to have the extra one. Uh, where's yours going to be at? Yours is going to be up here, I think, on that reservoir. I can't remember. Anyway, um, so to remove the... Oh, one, two, nope, this has got the five. There it is. One, two, three, four, five. Sorry, hard to do this without the, the parts in my hand. Then to remove the oil reservoir, you've got to remove, uh, I think it's these two bottom bolts, it looks like. Um, boy, that's hard to, to actually trace down without having it on there. Let's see. To remove the actual oil pump itself, looks like. This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. I'm not sure if that one's got to be removed or not offhand. Or if this one has to be removed. Um, so that'll take the front section off. But to remove the whole oil assembly to get down to this phase here, you have to have the oil tank off to get at a lot of these different bolts in here. All right, so to summarize, I guess I'd say, yeah, I would start by trying to just remove that seat uh, bracket since you're going to have to do this anyway if you're going to pull that motor. Um, if you can get away with leaving the electronics box in place to get a view down underneath there like we're talking about, try to leave it. Otherwise, it's only four bolts holding that thing on. Um, they're roughly the same position as these. So there's this you know, bolt over here. You'll find it, one down here. One down here, one down here. They're 12 millimeter bolts. Um, and then that that box, you probably have to disconnect like your uh, 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 spark plug wires. Um, disconnect your battery, of course. I think, I think that might be all you need to disconnect. And you should be able to pull that, you know, work that thing out of there kind of at an angle and just kind of pull it out of your way so you can get get a better visual clearance down in there. I think that would, just since it's only four bolts, I think that would benefit you a lot to do that. Um, and then in order to pull that oil reservoir off, I would be almost certain you're gonna have to move that out of the way anyway if it, if it comes down to that. So I would just take the time right away and just and pull those four bolts out, big deal. Uh, pretty easy stuff. Um, I think I sent you the service man. Yeah, I sent you the service manual on that already, so they'd be able to see the torque spec. It probably isn't much. It might be 13 foot pounds. Um, I'm sure it recommends red thread locker on there. Um, either put no thread lock on those, or just put blue, the uh, medium strength one. I mean, you're literally only just holding this thing in place. It isn't. Uh, it isn't going to come apart. I have never found a loose bolt back there ever. Um, and I guess the only other place I can think of for a possible leak would be your oil filter. Um, there's always a possibility that there's something on the surface of the, I mean, it's a brand new motor. So like this one here, you can see there's that, that crust buildup. So like before I put an oil filter on here, I mean, I could feel a ridge. I would take a, um, uh, some 800 grit or thousand grit wet and uh, or start with a razor blade and just like shave that scum off of there and then use the sandpaper just to do a final smooth on the surface where the o-ring is going to uh, connect in so um, there's a there's a possibility you're dripping oil out of the filter itself i mean when you do the oil change you're only siphoning oil pretty much from this first level so you see that plate down in there? That plate is right about here, and there is more oil below it. So ideally, you try to feed your straw right down that middle hole there, um, and you can you can reach the bottom. It's it's not easy to get it down into there, but you can, and that'll that'll siphon out the majority of your oil reservoir. But a lot of time, that bottom oil is left in there. Uh, so your clean oil is mixing with that a little bit, diluting it. Um, and then after it gets down to there, 
it is. I mean, it's, it, there's no mechanical, so it is just coming out of these. Where'd they go? It is just coming out of these straight away into your oil pump. And although the oil pump's not turning, I, I'm sure that oil can still migrate from here down into your, um, through your screen, you know I mean? I, I think it can migrate. I, I've really never thought about it before, but it should be able to migrate, get through your screen, and then it's down into your, into your bottom right away. Um, another possible leak spot, now that we're talking about it, I never thought about this, is the oil pan itself. Um, there is a gasket on the uh, FXHO and the VX110. You can see the, the lip of this gasket here there so being that there's a gasket there's always the possibility of a leak down in that area um, and you're when you're doing a fresh oil change if it sits for long enough before you use it um, that that fresh clean oil you know it could I mean you're it could migrate out of there and and be dripping from from the bottom side there that's uh that's about all I got for ideas for now, though. That would that would definitely require the motor to be pulled in order to inspect that, though, and uh, figure out if that's your leak spot. Uh, I have used a, a good inspection camera before to find a leak on a Kawasaki by getting it underneath the motor, and I was able to actually see a drip coming from one of those oil pan bolts right there. Uh, that was on a Kawi. So I was actually able to, to trace down my, my source of my leak on that one.